This is a short introduction to similar right triangles. Similar right triangles are formed when you have a right triangle, like this one right here, and you drop an altitude from the right angle, and that will go right to the hypotenuse. So when you do that, you're going to get three different triangles, and they will all be similar. So there is a small right triangle here, there is a medium-sized right triangle here, and of course the bigger one there. So let's take a look at them. If we take them out of the embedded triangle situation, so that smaller triangle, that little one kind of on the right side of the big picture, there is a second medium-sized one, and then the third one, which is the big overall triangle. And I've re-rotated them so that they all look like they're in the same orientation. They're all similar right triangles, which means that their sides are in proportions. And there are a few ways to find missing sides in similar right triangles, and that's what we're going to look at. Because these are similar right triangles, we can use proportions to find missing side lengths. So in this example here, I want to find that missing altitude length. We have to match up our corresponding sides because we know in similar triangles that corresponding sides are all in proportion. They're going to have that same scale factor ratio. It's a little bit hard to tell, so we're just going to have to match up hypotenuse to hypotenuse. Well, let's just give it a try. Let's see, if I'm looking at my big triangle, here's the hypotenuse, and the other two things are going to be longer and shorter legs. So this one looks shorter, this one looks longer. So let's go ahead and label these sides here. There's the hypotenuse. That to me looks like the longer leg, and that looks like the shorter leg. When we're in, say, this medium-sized triangle, well, hypotenuse to me is always easiest. That's going to be the side opposite the right angle. And it looks to me like the x is the shorter leg here, and the 15 looks like the longer leg. Now let's do the same thing, but for the smallest triangle. So again, to me, hypotenuse is easiest. There's the hypotenuse. And this guy looks like the shorter leg, and this guy looks like the longer leg. So now we have to figure out what can I match up here. Looking at this picture, uh, it looks like I want what is the shorter leg in one and the longer leg in the other. And I actually have shorter and longer legs. So I'm going to build my proportion using, say, a shorter to longer proportion. And it looks like I have to use the small and medium-sized triangle. The bigger triangle won't help me much here, because all I have there is hypotenuse, which I'm not using. So if I look at, say, the smallest triangle, the one that I've outlined in green there, if I go shorter to longer, the short side is 10, the long side is x. I'm going to move over to the medium size triangle, and the shorter is the x, and the longer is the 15. So I've got my proportion right here, and that's what I need to solve. So let's see, I'm using my cross product method. So let's see, x times x, that's x squared. And the other way, it's 10 times 15, which is 150. To solve, I'm going to take the square to both sides. There is going to be a negative root 2, right? But in this case, I'm going to reject the negative because I don't want a negative side length. So I'm just going to worry about the positive square root of 150. And I can reduce this radical. 150 is really, is that 25 times 6? which is 5 square root 6. So that will be the value of my x. And this can be a little bit confusing using proportions because sometimes matching up short to long and uh, hypotenuse to hypotenuse, whatever it is you're working with, it can get really confusing. And fortunately, there is another method which I can describe in another set of videos that does not use proportions. So stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching.